Well, I finally did it. Over Christmas, I realised the time had come to bring home a little brother for my Beeb. And here it is, the wonderful Acorn Electron, my first ever computer back in the day. But unlike that first elk of mine, this one comes with a plus one interface, an optional hardware add-on this plugs into the elk's edge connector and gives you two ROM cartridge slots, the uses for which go well beyond just a standard ROM cart, as we shall see. The Plus One incidentally also provides a user port along with a Centronix printer port alongside. The Elk keyboard is a thing of beauty, it's a joy to type on, and unlike the Beeb, you can see that it has shortcuts for lots of common basic commands on each key. A big shout out to Gavin from the Stardot community for keeping this in such excellent condition. For display, I'm going to use an RGB to SCART lead, which slots nicely into the Elk on the left hand side, and then all we need to do is plug in the power on the right and it instantly fires up. Now personally, I always found it a bit annoying that the Elk had no power button, unlike the Beeb. But never fear, the Retro community is here. With this snazzy inline power switch, courtesy of DataServe Retro, I can add in a power button without having to physically hack the Elk apart. And with that safely installed, at the flick of a switch, I can turn on my Elk without having to fiddle around with cables. And there she blows, the Electron's basic prompt with all the wonderful possibilities at your fingertips. So, have Elk can travel, what's the first thing we all want to do with one of these? Play games, of course! First up is the excellent Mega Games cartridge, aka the MGC from Dave Hitchens. This is a preloaded ROM cart with a selection of nearly 180 games. Dave sells these online and you can pick your own game selection. This makes it an incredibly convenient way to play games immediately. That is, if I can figure out how to shift break while holding a camera. The on-screen menu lets you scroll alphabetically through the games page by page, or else you can browse by genre or by publisher. I'm going to pick Acornsoft's Hopper, and you can see that the game loads up instantly, making the MGC a great hassle-free way to access the best of the Elks back catalogue. I'm a big fan, and I definitely recommend it if you want to have lots of games at your fingertips. As for Hopper, well, I've reviewed the Beeb version before, but you'll notice that the Electron version here is subtly different. But I'm going to splat out, because it's time to get serious. Yes, I may have called it a user port earlier, but let's be honest, we all knew it as the joystick port back in the day, and my trusty Competition Pro works a charm with the Electron Plus One interface. To test it out, I'm playing a little bit of Arcadians, and while I'm clearly rubbish at it, surprise surprise, playing with a joystick is just much more fun. Well, it's goodbye to the MGC for now, because my next add-on is the excellent Elk SD Plus One cartridge from Ramtop Retro. Instead of a pre-programmed ROM, this one features an SD card slot that supports SD cards of up to 8GB, onto which you can load as many disk images as you like. This gives you the flexibility to play more modern games from the likes of Zero X Code and other Acorn Electron Wizards, as well as a facility for saving programs. I've loaded mine up with a pre-made MMB image from Ramtop Retro that comes with its own game selection, which has some overlap with the MGC, as well as including a few extras. You can page through the menu as I'm doing here, but it also supports browsing by publisher, as well as a skip to games beginning with particular letters. Each menu item is stored on an underlying disk image, which has been folded into the MMB file, which means that when you select a game, as I'm going to do here with Boffin, you actually find that there are several options to choose from, as well as the original game that you picked. Boffin, of course, is that wonderful platform game which I originally reviewed for the Beeb. Technically, this version is known as Boffin 2, which came out a year after the original Boffin, but unlike that version, this one is Electron compatible. Ahem. Now, the Elk SD Plus One supports a number of bespoke commands, including star dcat, which lists all of the disk images folded into the master MMB image. You can see them scrolling across the screen here. Now you'll notice at the end that there are some gaps between image 233 and image 260, and before making this video I added my own disk image at entry 234. You can access any image you like by using the star din command followed by the numerical ID of the image. In doing so, the Elk SD switches to that image and you can use it as you would a conventional disk. This is great, because it means you don't have to have a GoTek or indeed the plus 3 interface that was the original means of attaching a physical floppy drive to your Electron. Just to demonstrate the point, I've loaded a very basic basic program, I can list and make changes to it, and then I can save it back to entry 234 on the Elk SD, and it's just as if I'd loaded and saved the file to disk. Pretty nifty, eh? 
But for all the cleverness of the MGC and the Elk SD Plus One, nothing quite hits that retro spot like one of these beauties. The Acorn ANF-03 Data Recorder, or in layman's terms, a tape deck. This one is especially gorgeous, a fully restored unit courtesy of Richard Webb, aka UK Webb on Stardot, who very kindly sold this one to me shortly after I'd bought my Electron from Gavin. Just the sight and touch of one of these is proper nostalgic gold for someone like me, for whom this was the very first way of loading software onto a computer. With nothing more than a 7 pinned in cable to connect it to the Elk and a simple figure of 8 power cable to give it life, we're ready to rumble. By the way, there's something very satisfying about a mechanical eject button. Now all that remains is to choose a tape, and what better one than the original Acorn Electron introductory cassette, the successor to the Beeb's very own welcome tape. This is particularly special for me because I never actually had this tape back in the day. Just pop it into the deck, press it firmly shut, and then tell the Elk that we want to chain quote quote, at which point it will search for a signal from the tape deck. Now we press play, and wait. Wait and pray for several agonising seconds, just hoping against all hope that our tape hasn't finally given up the ghost after all these years. And then, finally, there it is, the sweet, sweet music of the data being transmitted as an audio signal of machine code. And as confirmation, we can even see the first hexadecimal byte of memory show up on the screen. Honestly, it might be old technology now, but I still marvel at the concept of how literal audio can encode software, and in such a way as for it to be intelligible to a computer as executable code. I'm not an expert on these matters, but it isn't too far away from the later screech that would define a generation of 90s internet users when the very first dial-up modems came screaming onto the home computing scene, again making use of an audio signal to transmit information. The tape counter helps keep track of program positions on the cassette, and this analogue dial, something that all electronics products should still have, I feel, tells us that we're at full power. Thankfully, because this is the introductory cassette, it only needs to load the initial menu rather than the entire tape's worth of data, otherwise we might be here for some time. And there we have it, the unmistakable noisy intro sequence that tells us we have indeed purchased an Acorn Electron, in case we were in any doubt. By the way, you may have noticed that my lovely ANF-03 has an auto-stop feature, which means that once a program's final byte has been loaded into memory, in this case the menu program, the tape deck is sent a signal which tells it to stop playing any further. For tapes like the introductory cassette, this is especially helpful because multiple programs are stored on a single tape, and each time one of them has loaded, we don't have to quickly remember to hit stop and then end up accidentally playing part of the next program, which would make it much harder to resume loading later on. After a splash screen telling us what we can expect from the intro tape, as with the Beeb's welcome tape, we're asked to input the current time. This is because the Acorn Electron, like all 8-bit micros of the period, has no onboard BIOS equivalent to remember what the time is after being switched off. And with that out of the way, the menu program concludes, and we are asked if we wish to move on to the next program on the tape. Once we've indicated that we do, the tape deck automatically starts playing again, and we're back to waiting for more bytes to be loaded into memory via the audio signal. I'm going to let that chunter on in the background, as I'd like to make another video in the future focusing on the Electron's introductory cassette in full. For now though, I just want to end this video with a few closing thoughts. The Acorn Electron is one of those machines that holds a special place in their hearts for a lot of people, and not only those of us who grew up in the UK. It was Acorn's attempt to really break into the gaming market, and while it sadly failed to capitalise on the home computing boom in time for Christmas 1983, it nevertheless found its way into the homes of many of us 80s kids, purchased in many cases by well-intentioned parents who thought it might be a bit more educational. I am so pleased to have it in my collection, restored in all its glory, and kitted out with some excellent peripherals, both old and new. I hope you've enjoyed this little tour of my Acorn Electron, and that you'll join me again for the next video in the series. And until then, goodbye!